two, one. Hello. All right. Woo, we're live. Hello, guys. How are you doing? Uh, today, we are going to have a wonderful conversation. I have this beautiful, amazing, gorgeous goddess, powerful uh, Noel Cordeaux, right? Can you pronounce it in French for me, please? You did it better than I could have. I'm from New Jersey. Oh, okay. Sounds good. So she, uh, you're a co-founder of GRNI. We're going to talk a little bit about it. Yeah. And you're also a feminist uh, scholar, right? A coach, yeah. speaker, and sexologist, right? So, and I love that you're specializing in relationship with self because I believe that that's the most important relationship, right? Yeah. Uh, so um, tell me please a little bit, what is your company about? Sure. Journey is a life coaching company, and we do a lot of different things out there in the world. But basically, the premise that we stand behind is that there's no such thing as a broken human, and that at any time, you are capable of radical, radical, radical transformation. So we offer low-cost life coach training. And then on the other side of things, um, we're a coaching company. So we provide uh, tools and technology for virtual support groups. We have strategic partnerships that our coaches can go to festivals like Wanderlust and gain um, professional experience. Um, and I'm at the helm. It's fun. Awesome. All right. Wonderful. Well, today we're going to be talking about sex, sexuality, and joie de vivre, right? The joy of life. And that is something that I am interested in and in bringing people from their lethargic status quo to ravenous living. And today, since you are, you have so much experience and uh, education in sexology and all of the training and coaching, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. So as a life coach, with extensive research and practice, okay? Uh, what is your number one secret of having ravenous thirst for life? Do you think that people are just born with that, like positive energy, or can we develop that quality of living with passion and joy for life? Yeah, it's you're, it's it's actually the opposite. Um, you're not you're not well. I mean, let's see. You are born with it. So think about a child. When it, when it, a child is a, a child. Everything is exciting, the sky, bugs, colors, you know, and then society and social construction and rules and norms and money and capital kind of smashes it out of us as we get into adulthood. So for me, the number one secret of um, ravenous living would be defining for yourself as an adult new measurements for what is really, truly, deeply important to you in life and living from the inside out versus the outside in in order to establish for yourself a relationship with yourself of like, hey, I built this life, I designed it, I like myself, I like my relationships, I like who I am in partnership with others, I'm kind, I'm good, I'm giving, I'm generous, I'm fun, whatever is meaningful to you. I love it, you know, from uh, really like, a Putting, you know, we, we're in our society. First of all, we're conditioned by what is the norm, supposedly. And then we're conditioned to blame everything, right? So we're pointing the finger outside all the time. So when you look inside and really understand what's important for you and what is your version of joie de vivre, right? It's going to be different than mine, right? And there is, it's, it's okay to have that. Wonderful. I love that. Now, you're also a sexologist, so can you explain to uh, us, please, how sex, sexuality, and sexual energy connected to overall uh, joy of life, and how can our sexuality and our relationship with sex, right, prevent us from experiencing the state of living ravenously? Yeah, so perhaps I should explain what sexology is first. So mm -hmm. sexology is, um, is, is just like psychology, the study of the mind, except yes study of sexuality, sexolog sexological worldview, how your mind, your body, your family of origin, um, your relationships, your relationship with yourself all relates to this very, very deep, primal, complex layer of existence. Um, it's, it's very complex. It's very complex. So, you know, in the United States, we uh, the history here is a puritanical society. 
puritanical meaning coming from the Puritans, where sexuality, sex, the primal nature of existence, hedonism, hedonics, pleasure was really frowned upon. And so much of our society reflects different ways in which people um, learn to stuff this aspect of themselves and learn to kind of um, reject it in many ways. And, you know, as a human, you know, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable often for people to hear me say to them who you are, your sexuality, how you relate to yourself and as, as a sexual being is a primal aspect of being, primal aspect of being, yet it is something that is so just shut out and taboo in society. And so, you know, people are separated from themselves in terms of coming home in this way. And that's- I love it. Yeah, and unfortunately, this is going on, uh, and you know, I don't know. Of course, for anybody, right? But you know, as a woman, I grew up with the shame, you know, from the society that you should not be, um, I don't know, dressing up this way, acting this way. You are attracting wrong attention just because when I was really just being me, having fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that for me, sexuality is not just about sex. It's the way we relate to, to the world, the way you eat, the way you love to cook the way you dance the way you just you know wake up every morning and what do you do right how do you perceive every moment yeah and 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 i love what you said about dressing because that's from a positive psychology perspective choosing to adorn yourself choosing to adorn yourself in a way that makes you happy is a huge part of well-being Right? And don't think of it that way, but it is decorating your body, decorating your home. And you're so right with the flavors, with food, the way you choose to interact with it. I mean, it's all what life is, you know? Yeah. And, you know, uh, to be honest with you, I think it even allows you to express different personality, you know, like personality traits that you have. Like when I am dressed in a suit, right, I am one type of Marina. And then when I'm in my crazy Zumba clothes, I'm another type of Marina. You know, it's the same with, with hair color, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. And, and then it goes into, you know, and the study of human sexuality is so fascinating because it goes into gender constructs, you know? Um, so a gender, um, gender is very much like being right-handed or left-handed. It's something that you just feel internally and want to express with your physical action one way or another. So I write with my left hand, but if I pick up a baseball, I'll throw it with my right hand. And it's right. the same thing for gender. I mostly, present as a cisgendered female, I mostly enjoy adorning myself and dressing in a way that presents ideas of feminine gender. But there are some times with my right hand, like I throw a ball that I take on the masculine and I enjoy it and it's who I am. And, and you know, when we're thinking about a boy should be this, a girl should be that, it's not that way at all. It's, it's what we feel internally at any given moment. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Do you believe that talking about women, that women in particular have a difficult time expressing or even knowing their desires, which is very important for joie de vivre, right? Um, because, you know, like in my practice, people come to me and they say, oh, I'm unhappy. I'm like, okay, so what do you want to in your life? And there's a pause. Mm -hmm. That scares me more than anything, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I mean, I think that's what we're talking about, living from the inside out versus the outside in. Um, and I can, and it has really deep um, historical roots as well. So before the Industrial Revolution, people lived in villages and towns in their family of origin, and they were kind of stuck, you know, in terms of where they can go, what they do, even what they looked like, you know, like you would see a certain nose and know, oh, that person belongs to this family. After mm -hmm. the Industrial Revolution, people started moving to cities and towns. And the way that folks learned to identify each other was through um, material items, through brand names, goods, like a, a certain pocket watch or a certain kind mm -hmm. of corset could signify a certain level of wealth. And that would tell you where was this person well to do? Was this person poor? And then you would make judgments. So that's how society kind of got into this um, pattern of living from the outside in, of saying, if I have this item, it will signify who I am in life. And we're now at this kind of rupturing point where I think people everywhere are saying, I don't want to live that way anymore. I don't want a pocketbook 
to tell me who I am that actually doesn't really do anything for me at the end of the day. And they're starting to wake up and say, well, what would it mean to choose my life? What would it mean to live from the outside? In? What do I actually enjoy? I think we should give a homework to our listeners today yeah. to just write down what does it mean for you without this is for you. You don't need to share it with anybody, but this is a good start to even I, th I found that when you write things down, it's kind of becomes more concrete, right? Yeah. As yeah. opposed to we have this, uh, you know, amorphous kind of, uh, um, you know, a belief that, oh, I want to be happy. What does it mean? Right? hundred uh, percent. And but I think we need to go further with the homework because it can't just be um, thinking. It has to be noticing. So I would push it a bit further to your listeners and say, write down four to five times throughout the day when you notice that you are actually experiencing joy, pleasure, contentment, happiness. What actually brings you joy? Not what do you think will bring you joy, but what happens really? I love it. I love it because what we think sometimes and what we're really experiencing is very different. I agree with you. Absolutely. And I have the last question to you because I know your time is very precious. Uh, so in my practice, you know, I also am an energy healer and a coach, right? I found that sexuality, creativity, and spirituality, they all come from the same place. I mean, it's the, our second chakra, really. Um, what is your take on it? How do you see all these areas of life related to one another? So for me personally, um, that's your life force. You know, that's that's your life force. And and when and we're talking about the relationship of of spirituality, sexuality, self expression, it really comes down to existence. And and what makes us human is this capacity for joy and for life and for living and for creation. So. Um, yeah, that's it. It all boils down to the same source for sure. Thank you so much. I know it's not enough. I can talk to you for hours. Uh -huh. And I think that, you know, everybody who's watching today, please reach out, uh, check out Noel's uh, wonderful company. Um, you can ask any questions. By the way, we have like maybe one minute. Um, I want to see, I see that people are watching. Mm -hmm but I don't have any immediate questions, please write it down and maybe we can get to that right away. But if not, maybe this topic is a little bit, you know, like individual kind of private, uh, then make sure that you uh, DM me, contact Noel and um, just uh, reach out to us, okay? Yes, absolutely. I don't see everybody maybe they're watching on their devices not able to type or something but uh, thank you guys for watching thank you thank you thank you for being here i'm so excited for our interview in the um authority magazine and uh, thrive global watch for more uh, for a written article coming soon big article and we are gonna um conclude today so thank you thank you so much thank you for having me it was lovely and everybody, live the ravenous life that you deserve and you create on your own. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.